That's a lot of toilet paper. <laughs> yes, it is. Impressive. Thanks. Look at you stacking that toilet paper, taking care of the family's most basic of needs. Is this going somewhere? Oh, I was just reminiscing. Oh, no. Yes, darling, remember when you were a single gal with that little apartment downtown? No. Oh, darling, yes, you do. Remember getting up late on the weekends, strolling through the farmer's market to the local cafe where you'd sip coffee and stare at the clouds and the suitors as they strolled by. Clouds? And the suitors? Suitors? Yes, darling, if I remember correctly, your dance card was always full. Yeah, it was, but why are you talking about this and who says dance card these days? Because, darling, the artist within you needs to remember the colors, the sounds, the freedom, the romance, the chic, unencumbered, single gal. I have to scrub the toilets. Try, darling. Yes, you can do it. Bonjour, mes amis. Je m'appelle Andy. Bienvenue sur Meuble Fable. Ah, what could be more fresh, more fabulous, more symbolic of the chic, independent young woman than the eclectic and fabulous Parisian style? Having a daughter approaching launching age has brought back many a memory of that time in my life. And so when I came across a prospect that I thought would be perfect for a young independent woman, I reached out to my eldest daughter to see if she would like me to make it over with her in mind. It was no surprise to me that she would, but it was a surprise when she explained that her style inspiration was the same as the one that I had in my mind. Gal surprise! <laughs> Today's fable doesn't start out with a piece of furniture. It starts out with a pillow. This lovely tapestry style pillow was brought back to me by my younger sister, Meg, after she had traveled to France with her husband's family. And I must tell you, they were there because her husband's grandfather was being honored as one of the surviving members of the 103rd Infantry Division who liberated the city of Saint-Dié in 1944, World War II. My brother-in-law's grandfather disarmed a Nazi soldier, taking his sword. It's a gross understatement to say that a furniture fable pales in comparison to that very true story, but I am proud and happy to share that piece of extended family lore with you, especially so close to Veterans Day. I had always loved this particular and very French combination of colors, and even had previously purchased some antique French fashion drawings with some of the very same color references, and had always wanted to use these drawings, as well as my lovely French rabbit tapestry pillow, as an inspiration for a furniture redesign. Enter our main character, this rather ubiquitous standing mirror, solid wood made in Taiwan, and I see them all the time where we live. I think that their stain and their traditional lines tend to make people see them as pretty dated. This one I had picked up for free. It had a broken foot, but I've seen them for sale anywhere from 10 to maybe $30. Other than the repair, the mirror felt like it was pretty solid. And pieces like this can be so much fun. Really, they are a blank canvas for your creativity. I got to work on the repair first. I realized that if I unscrewed that bottom finial piece, I could slide the foot back into that fitted slot. But then I also saw that first I needed to glue that little broken piece. 
that had come off of that long side piece. So I used some Gorilla Glue and carefully applied some to both the piece and the sidebar, smoothing it out with my finger. And once I had it fitted in correctly, I taped it down with some painter's tape and wiped back any excess glue. Then I grabbed my crocodile cloths that I had picked up on my last trip to Home Depot. I've never used these before, but they are kind of great. They're nice and big and very tough. Great to have in your shop or your garage, wherever you're working on your projects. I used one to wipe down the mirror just to get the majority of the dust and grime off. And then because I was out of my simple green, I grabbed my big gallon refill container and mixed up a new batch. Sometimes folks will ask me why they don't see me cleaning with TSP much. Um, I will use it on occasion, but I really feel like a lot of the time I can get things perfectly clean without it. And I'd rather use a less caustic product if I can. I made a one-to-one -one mix of simple green and water and that's still a pretty concentrated cleaner, which is great for dirty furniture. This batch will last me quite a while, so it's a great money saver too. I removed those sidebars from the mirror and then I checked the repair. It was looking good, so I took that tape off and then proceeded to remove the central bracing bar. Using my surf prep sander, I sanded that bar completely, removing all of the finish and the stain. And then I give the rest of the mirror a good scuff sanding. In some areas, a lot of the stain really wanted to come off. So I just went ahead and removed it. I wasn't completely sure, but I thought there was a chance I might want to use some bare wood. So here you can see I'm wiping back all that dust from the sanding. This is super important. Your paint is very needy. It wants to bond with whatever it comes in contact with first. So you don't want that to be a layer of dust. When you have turned details like this piece has, you really need to take that extra bit of time and get into those crevices with a wet towel so you know that your surfaces are dust free and ready to paint. And now let's meet our paint, shall we? Boom, here she is, friends. Yes, that's right, red. This is Fort York Red by Fusion Mineral Paint, to be exact. <laughs> and why not? She means business. This red is not afraid of anything, my friends. And as the young people of today would say, I am here for it. <laughs> Oh, it's so, so, so pretty. Okay, calming down. I started on my first coat. Now, no, I am not using any primer. Why? Well, for one reason, you know, go ahead and bleed through. I'm not too scared about that because my paint is red. So uh, not such a huge issue to worry about. But seriously, a primer is actually nice with a red paint especially a tinted or gray primer, because red typically takes several more coats than other colors. But Fusion is a great paint with a built-in primer, and the surfaces of this mirror were in good shape. So I decided to just summon up my courage and go for it. Now, remember, your first coat of red on anything, a wall or a piece of furniture, will pretty much look terrible. <laughs> So don't lose your nerve, just, just keep moving.
I'm sure there are also many folks out there who will say, why don't you protect your mirror surface? Well, I've always kind of prided myself on my cutting in abilities, but quite honestly, this little brush by Fusion is so good, it's kind of making it easy for me. Also, honestly, tiny drops of paint are not that hard to remove from a mirror, so again, I just say fear not. You may have noticed that I forgot to wear gloves in the beginning of my painting. Yeah, it's really good to wear them when painting with red. Fusion paint doesn't wash off all that easily and you can see that painting with red kind of looks like you're in the middle of a crime scene. You know, if, if you suddenly needed to jump into your car and run to the store for something, it's nice not to have your hands covered in red paint or just go for it and mutter out damn spot to yourself as you select your cereal. Okay, while my second or maybe third coat actually was drying, I got that center bracing piece out and ready to be stenciled. I am using Blueberry by Dixie Belle. This shade of blue will be so perfect with our red. Very chic, very French. And with these little stencil craft brushes I got at Michael's, I'm going to be stenciling this very Parisian floral stencil. So I am just using the paint off of the stick that I used to stir the paint and then dabbing it off onto that brown craft paper I'm working on top of so that I'm essentially stenciling with a dry brush technique. That's really crucial. You want full strength paint, but not very much of it for a good stencil. As always with chalk paint, if you add something that you don't like, this little one stencil looked just kind of like a blob to me, you can wipe it back with water and a cloth. It's just so easy and so manageable. Okay, now it was time to reassemble the mirror. I screwed the side pieces back into the mirror itself and then laid it on its back. Franny and I had talked it over and we both really liked the idea of adding some more drama. So I sanded back an asymmetrical curve on the front top of the mirror, as well as a top section of two of the turned side posts. Then I got back out the stencil and brush and paint and began adding that stencil to the bare wood of those side posts. So because this isn't a silk stencil, meaning that it's not, it's not interconnected to itself, you can see that trying to apply it to a rounded surface was a bit challenging. But you can do it. You just, you know, you kind of need to go image by image, turning the piece and adding sections of the stencil where you think they will look nice. 
The great thing about chalk paint is that it dries very quickly, so it's pretty easy to work with your piece and not worry about smudging what you've already done. After I finished my stenciling, I used my very dry stenciling brush to blend some of that blueberry paint into the edges where the raw wood was meeting up with the Fort York red, as well as over any parts that I had distressed so far. And just also some of that bare exposed wood where the stencils were sitting. Then I did that very same treatment to that exposed curve along the top of the mirror. This stenciling treatment is giving this relatively new mirror a lot of old world charm. Which came first, the blue or the red? It really begins to create a story for this mirror. It looks as if it has lived a while. I put that center bar back as well as the bottom finials and then I did some quick touch-ups of the Fort York red paint and then I brought the mirror back up onto the porch and used a 220 grit sandpaper to do a little bit more distressing along the mirror frame. I also scuffed up the mirror's hardware and then I added a little bit of the blueberry to those metal turners. I continued on with more dry brushing, almost using the blueberry paint the same way I would use a wax, working it into some of those details and adding more of it along the under and over edges of the mirror frame. Franny was doing the camera work for me right now and we just kind of chatted throughout this whole process, talking about what she liked and what I liked and how this blending, how it reads to your eye and, and starts to really kind of age the mirror and give it so much personality. Lastly, I added 
just a few touches of that blueberry paint to those little screws showing on the sides. Okay, do you remember our tall drink of water, busted and broken, but luckily not shattered, dated and boring and blah mirror? And here she is now. La la la. Is there anything more fantastic than a fresh and perfectly toned red? Many a designer will tell you, always put something red in every room. And maybe temper it a little bit with some bare wood and beautiful French blue. Our refreshed mirror looks now full of romance and story. How many adventures has she been on? I think her stories would be worth a listen for sure. And I know it's a tad early, but just in case you are wondering, yes, Fort York Red is a gorgeous Christmas red. It's that centered of a shade. sure seemed to approve. She plunked herself right down in the middle of the photo shoot and didn't seem to want to leave. And who wouldn't want to see something so lovely peeking out from behind the tree? But whatever the season, I think this once broken and headed for the landfill mirror will be adding sparkle and style to the life of a fantastic young woman. I am very happy to report that fantastic young woman is very much enjoying her new rustically chic mirror. And I had a great time doing this design process with her input. We went back and forth about how much distressing to add, how much of the stencil to do. You may have noted we decided to leave those feet very crisp, no distressing at all on them. And you also may have noted I did not add any additional top coat to this piece. Yes, there is a top coat in Fusion, but I deliberately left it off of everything else, and here's why. One, it just kind of works with this style. It's already has a lot of distressing and organic kind of aged elements to it, but also if Franny decides she would like to play with any of those design elements, perhaps take off a little bit more red, add some more stencil, do some more distressing. Maybe she wants to add a little gilded wax. It will make it all the easier. And yes, I have given her free reign to do so. I am delighted actually that she and many people of her generation are really embracing the furniture redesign arts. I hope you enjoyed this Parisian-inspired makeover and perhaps found a little upcycling inspiration for the upcoming gift-giving season. If so, please remember to click subscribe before you leave. Leave me a like and a comment. Let me know what would you have done with this mirror and what special person in your life would it go to? Thank you again for joining me, my friends. I will see you next time for more Furniture Fables.